everybody watching in the future. So Agile Ventures, um, we have a series of projects. Um, the uh, just some notes on each of them. Local support, a lot of pairing going on. Uh, there was a meeting with a client on Friday. We'll we'll come back to that very soon. Um, not much happening on the peer to peer schedule front. All the graders. Um, we've got um, a couple of people. Yeah, a couple of people uh, have. Can have I interrupt work. on PP Please. scheduler? I think yeah, somebody else wanted to talk, talk about it later, but Abby is said she's going to be. Abby Jones said she would post a um, event in Google Plus. Okay. Uh, to do some brainstorming on the scheduler. Go oh, great, great stuff. Yes, I mean there's lots of things happening. I mean I would say one thing related to the P2P scheduler is as regards the 169 course. Um, uh, we, we we've got rather than suggesting people try and pair on the homeworks through pair programming, which happened over the summer. Um, I basically suggested people go and pair through the edX uh, SaaS community, and we've seen that now is that you know 800. It's it's it, it's within the space of a week. It's got more members than pair programming. Um, and uh, we've got a huge number of events going on there. Um, the you know I, I assume some of them successfully. Um, I mean it's just it's 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 sort of huge. Um, I'm very explicitly in the 169 course encouraging people to pair program on all the homeworks. Um, the biggest issues I think we're finding is is one that people are still creating uh, hangouts that 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 well they're creating events that are not hangouts. They're creating them and then giving them physical locations and then kind of being. Oh, like how do we do this? So I'm kind of going through by hand and saying to people, no, you need to create a hangout and this and the other, which is obviously a bit time consuming. It's continuous. It would be lovely to have some sort of interface to uh, this system to be able to allow people to press a button and sort of ensure that when they're creating a, an edX related event, that it was a hangout event. I, I was just reading through the um, the the book, the Els book again. Mm -hmm. and noticed that uh, Google Plus w was in there in Chapter 1 as an example of how not to do um, um, software as a service. Yes, the API. Well, I, yes, the, the, the Google Plus, in, indeed. Um, I, I think the API is, although that was, you know, a couple of years that ago. That was 2011, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, um, I mean, I'm hoping that the API will have gotten better. I mean, we'll see. Uh, I, I think their event system is, compared to a lot of other event systems, it, it, it's very good and open and free. Um, and we're doing quite well here, but um, yeah, I mean, the other issue is that people sort of also just kind of want to kind of just spend time discussing. I mean, this guy's here created a SaaS cr course crowd map so that people can work out who's in the same time zones. Um, other people are sort of discussing things like, oh, maybe should, I, should we should we pair? Should we not pair? I'm trying to encourage everybody to make sure that they, um, you know, post events because I, I think that's the most effective way of getting it to actually. Happen, um, but I, th I also love the fact that there's an open, kind of open brainstorming going on here within the community about how to, to organise ourselves. So um, that's excellent. Yeah. Um, before we go away from it, is there a way to create a hangout ahead of time, or is it best just to uh, click the hangouts on air link a few minutes before the meeting actually starts? I, I think that's the best way. Uh, I, the the thing with the creating a hangout in advance is that you have to have at least two people in it long term, otherwise it gets automatically closed after like 30 minutes or something. I mean, I, I had previously would, would uh, wanted to get to a place where we had just like a number of like, let's say, 10 ongoing hangouts that everybody could just sort of drop into. Like there would be a local support hangout would just be permanently on and mm -hmm. people kind of just like kind of go into that room and, and start working there or whatever. But uh, I think that Google's not really set up to let us do that. At the Although that may have changed since I tried it, you know, a few months yeah. back. Maybe until uh, Armando meets the right person in the valley. Uh, in, indeed. Or, or, well, I mean, actually, it's Chinmay Kulkani who's doing the Hangout supports for the HCI course, um, who's got got some really interesting widgets that he's managed to get working with Google+. Plus. I'm trying to talk to him again. Um, uh, again, their solution is not quite, I think, what we, what we need. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I think at some point, if the right people connect up with each other, there could be... All the components are here for, for, uh, you know, for, for a really successful... Process, but yeah, the, the, the best the best thing I think my, my after having tried a number of different things, my recommendation is you know post an event at a specific time, um, see if other people will, you know join, uh, and I mean I think I think if you're if you're not not sure you know create a hangout type event in advance, and I mean if we just go in here and look at I mean that's one thing I wanted to mention part of the mention is is partly because now the edX SaaS community has got a lot of people pairing on homeworks pair programming I, I've moved the um, I'm posting the uh, Agile Ventures notices into the um, pair programming group. That seems to make more more sense now. But so just just for everybody in this room, in case in case it's unclear. But so when you create an event, you've got these event options here, 
and the and then in the advanced, basically you can make the event hangout, which means that it's then a hangout will be automatically created for you, or uh, if I now turn that off, you can make it an event on air, in which case anybody can attend, but it doesn't have a hangout. And so that for the for the group events like this group meeting, I make these events on air, and then at the last minute I will add, uh, as I did, and you've all joined, um, you know, a broadcastable event. Just making it this event on air on, on on air here doesn't do anything to tell you about the, whether the hangout subsequently is going to be broadcastable or not. So I, I think it's a bit of a. I'm, I'm sure at some point Google is going to see the light and they're going to realize that they could pay me a huge amount of money to solve these issues for them very simply. But uh, that day has not come yet. So um, yeah. Uh, so Peter showed you a little bit. Order graders. We've got a number of world TAs um, taking a strong interest in that. Um, we've got the order grader chat is now active. We've got um, also one uh, Berkeley teaching assistant has been tasked specifically with um, assisting me with deploying the, the auto graders. So we've done a number of pairings on that recently. Uh, that's becoming active. We're starting to have, um, we're trying to get set up to have a production environment, a test environment, anyway. Um, just on that EduChat uh, topic, the um, IRC chat embed has now gone live in the 169.1 course, although only to one third of the students. There's an, there's an experiment going on where they want to try to check the relative uh, effectiveness for different students in a sort of a uh, you know controlled blind experiment. Um, so there's bits and pieces of work to do on that, but it's not. So autograders and local support are the two most active things at the moment. Um, so other things being equal, I would probably just hit local support first and then move on to autograders. Does anybody have um, anything, any other issues that they want to add or highlight before we start hitting individual points in local support and autograders? I'll take that as a no. Uh, let's go to local support. Um, so, so we've had a busy, busy few days. There's been lots of pairing sessions. Um, I met the clients on uh, Friday. Um, had a good session. Uh, David and um, uh, David and uh, Michael joined joined us, and we had um, some some more people on the client side. I only got an audio recording of that meeting, uh, annoyingly, but. Uh, yeah, that was that was pretty good. I guess what we will do, um, I, I guess well, well, yeah, we'll, we'll go through the the pivotal things. But that all all the information on that uh, client meeting is available here, uh, including just the, the audio recording. Um, I'll try to make sure I get it screencast next time. But let's let's you know for organisation's sake, uh, we'll hit here. So um, we've got so automated importing of emails. I demoed that for the clients on uh, on. Friday, and they were they were pretty happy with that. Um, I basically, you know, many thanks to everybody who input into that, particularly John and Michael and so on. Um, that seemed to work smoothly. We imported the emails on the staging server. Uh, we didn't we didn't lose any of the um, uh, the map coordinates, and we didn't over. I I think we didn't overwrite any of the. Is it Harrison? We didn't overwrite. Uh, any of the existing emails. Uh, so the the client was. I've given the client that that URL, and they will be checking the the details of of that just to see if there's anything unexpected. But assuming that they're happy, you know, they will say yes. Push it to production. I'll click deliver, and we'll we'll move on there. So uh, do yes, they get? Please. Go do ahead. They get ahead. Do they get a report back of which emails were not overwritten, so that they can compare them and see again? against the yeah. special knowledge that, that they that, might that, have. They, 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 they don't. I mean, at the moment, we've got it reporting, you know, the the organizations that the matches are not found. I mean, that was one of the things that I considered before moving it out was, um, you know, it would be nice to get a much, you know, it would be nice to know, you know, which organizations were updated, which ones, as you say, were not uh, updated as a result of conflicts, and, and which ones were not updated and have a nice uh, output for that. I guess since the client hasn't specifically requested that, and we don't necessarily have spare cycles, I mean that that yes. would be a lovely thing for this, yeah. you know, import thing to have. Um, but, maybe but, we'll yeah. create, create an icebox chore to um, up, up, upgrade the um, features to support that. But it's it's, it's I guess it's going to be pretty low priority at the yeah. moment. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, Active Record doesn't have anything like that. Built-in, so it would be writing our own little reporting. Yeah, I mean, and, I mean, I, the, or I just put Simple a few. Enough, put, but, I put yeah. a few put statements in there to in, in, put out which are the the, the organisations that don't get pulled in. I mean, I, yeah, yeah. So. Uh, well, you could just build in-memory collections, right? Because there's only going to be. Yeah. 
you know, there's only there's less than six hundred organizations anyway. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, so yes, you can build in, You can just build in memory collections. Great, so always fits in as many copies of it as we need. Yeah. yeah. Of whose email was found, and then of whose uh, of yeah. all the different things you want to report, and then just at the end print a statement that says, you know. These emails were found, so these yeah, organizations yeah. were not. Well, let's let's. I mean, you know, put the, put those thoughts. I think we shouldn't spend too much time on it since the client hasn't requested it. But yeah, put all those thoughts into an. If David, if you in the background there could create an icebox, sure. And and Michael, you could put those thoughts into it. That would be very helpful. Um, I guess we've got. The, is this David? Michael, is this David? This is this this one here. This this refactor permission data organizations into model for user. Is this something that there's a, that's that ongoing can can thing you're working on? Um. Yeah, it's too small for me to read. Yes, it is the ongoing can can thing. Yes. Yeah, um, and that's that's still that's still ongoing, and no no particular up, uh, updates or block blocks there. Um, well, yeah, the only the only block is is um, being able to pair with somebody um, that's familiar enough with local support that they don't have to learn local support at the same time as learning sure. can can. Yeah. That, that's um, a no no for some people. Yeah, well, that may come in time. Anyway, uh, mm. that's. But then, then, it, then it doesn't harm. Or it doesn't harm. The, it's just some something that I'm spinning cycles over at the yeah. moment when I can find somebody to work with it on. It yeah. doesn't doesn't harm our. Uh, it doesn't hold uh, us up from it, doing it, anything it, else. Yeah, and just just checking if there was anything um, that we could immediately help you with. But it sounds like yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we've got the, this is my organization course. link, and that's something. Hey, Marianne, good to have you with us. Um, any updates on that um, feature? Hi. Hi um, we're um, pretty close to being done with it. I think yes. Maybe um, you know this week. Great, great. Yeah, I noticed you 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 split out the two two features and so on. Okay, fantastic. And uh, but uh, nothing critical blocking you. Just a question of, of finding time to get to it later this week. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that yeah. sounds that's that's fine. We'll move on. Excellent. Appreciate you working on that. Um, so just uh, for people people who maybe not so familiar, this is this is the um, uh, a feature to have. A button here that says, you know, this is my organization, and allow people to sort of request ownership of organizations in this uh, local support directory. Uh, so let's go back to next one. Automatic. So, so this one, we this um, was implemented. This is a, John and I did this together um, the other the other week, um, I think. And then my and I finished it. Or anyway, um, but so this one we demoed to the client, and the client liked it, and that was that was pretty good. I, I think there are various issues about the terminology in the website. Like um, you know, sign in and sign out. You know, org login, new new org, all this sort of stuff. Uh, things that can be worked on, but that there, I guess we're cycling back around on that because this the, the feature can be released and it augments the the site in a positive way. So um, that will basically be delivered uh, as soon as the clients finish checking the emails. Um, I don't know if you, did you if you caught the audio recording, John, of the the meeting. Sorry, that what didn't get. Yeah, it did. Yeah, all oh, great stuff. So, so I think the admin, you know, very pleased with the ability to edit the pages. I think the key thing, as I mentioned to you, uh, is about that white space. Did, did did that comment make sense? Yeah, we want to um, take the white space out to the middle. Yeah, I think that the the key thing is that um, I mean, in the longer run, the uh, you know, ideally, well, I think what the what the client, my sense of what the client expressed in the meeting. Is that in the long run, ultimately, what they would love to be able to have for these pages is a two-column setup, where you know both sides could be edited. Um, in in the first instance, though, I mean that that's a long-term thing. In the first instance, you know the current pages are in this you know half half the screen sort of thing, which is you know is reasonable. The addition of the edit feature has pushed them further over, so we've now got this new area. Of kind of white space, you know, so it's it's now even more scrunched up, um, and I guess that that's a side effect of of just some something with the template or the controller, I guess. Yeah, I'm not sure, and um, I'm wondering if it is something that admin people see uh, only, or if everybody sees that. So definitely something to look into. Yeah, um, I mean, I think yes, that's a good. I mean, I can I can sign out quickly and. That's a good question, actually. I, but I think it seems like there. I'm signed out there, so that's. Okay. What is it? I, I suspect it's, it's. Well, if you're around, maybe at the end of this meeting we can quickly fix it together. Um, yeah. Uh, that would be great. Anyway, uh, so that's there to do. I think. Do we have that in? 
tasks. That's this one. Critical task here is uh, remove white space. And then, and then we'll then we'll do a put, and then potentially uh, once we've got those out into production, I think we can start looking at pulling in. So this was um, Jorge has done a whole. Uh, he's got a pull request on Postgrade. So um, uh, I mean, I, I sort of is uh, who does currently not have Postgrade installed on the development machine? I don't think I actually have it installed. No. Yeah, neither do I. Yeah. So I mean, I kind of this is basically we've got this migrate to Postgrey, you know, pull request, and and we do need to use this. I mean, it, it pulls in a you know the gem, it switches everything over. Um, of course, it's not going to work if we don't for any individual developer who doesn't have uh, Postgrey installed locally. So, you know, I guess maybe we will want to leave off this until Marion, you've completed your feature. Um, uh, Marion, is is your fe your feature on a branch? Is it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So in, in principle, there's no. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. yeah well, I don't see a conflict either. Uh, and it, no. Well, I um, guess it, I guess it's that if if I pull this in, then um, you know, if I mean, <coughs> so, so sensibly, uh, if if we if we push all of this, I mean, the, the stuff that's going. So the the gem on. that that includes in the gem file, the PG gem, isn't that just a client side? Yeah. That's just the like the the hookup between the thing yes, that allows just, to talk just to the, the Ruby yeah. side. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. So what what what's going to tell Rails how to here this one find that's going to tell Rails how to find Postgre? Yeah, it's got this adapter. It's going to going to spin a Postgre instance up. No, it's going to look for a Postgre a running Postgre service on the system. Which is what Ubuntu makes when you install Postgre. I don't know if Mac and Windows yeah. do that. I mean, but that's I, I, what Ubuntu does. Yeah, and Postgre also, uh, Mac does that as well. I mean, I have. I, I I'm mean, just wondering how how that interacts with like the the testing environment. Well, you know, I think. Well, uh, I think we'll have to see for each of us individually. Um, Jorge has yeah. got this with the tests all passing, and in fact, actually modified the Travis uh, continuous integration so that it would, you know, to make sure that it worked. Uh, but yes, I think we'd have to see okay. how that goes on. I mean, I guess it's sensibly does, for... Does, uh, has this been run against Travis yet? Yes, it has. I don't know your it's, side. It's, yeah, yeah it's, the build has passed, yeah. So, I mean, I think oh, sensibly for, for Marion and, and Risa and Marcelo working on that feature, they would at least uh, sync to the, the develop for the new features that um, are about to go out to do with the importing and the editing of files and so on. You know, one would imagine that those will not interact at all with this is more organized and link, but of course, you know, ideally they'll be tested against them. But uh, yeah, I guess we may Yeah, the the, the thing is if we if we do pull in this uh, migrate to Postgre, then that means any uh, syncing to the to the head to syncing to my local support repo would then pull that same thing into um, uh, to Marriott you know to Marion's code base, which you know, might be more more challenged than is necessary this week. We'll we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, yeah, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. So it looks like there's somebody started on the cookie acknowledgement policy. That's uh, this Thomas unfortunately yes, has just had to leave. Um, but David, you've been working on that with him. No, no. Thomas is getting ready to do that. He's he's claimed that because he wants to start on it. Yeah. All right. There's a, there's a there's a planned pairing between you guys on this thing, but you haven't you haven't started on that. That's that's right. Yes, we haven't booked uh, meetings for that because Song has taken on something as as well. Victor, uh, yeah, well, so he was taking on the um, uh, the tooltips thing. Is that that's right? right. Yes. So he didn't hit the start button on it yet. No, um, uh, but we can. Uh, I think I just added him in. Added him here. Will. Yeah. So did you you started on that today? Did you? Yes. Yes. Okay. Cool. Yeah. We'll we'll just click in, start. In principle, we know how to do it as long as we uh, can figure well, it out. Well, I guess the, the, the thing is there is it hasn't been yeah, it's estimating. So that's something that we might do in this meeting right now. Oh, it's not uh, been estimated yet. Very no. good. Okay. And then we've got this one here. It's what, so once this this these chunk of things can be delivered, then we can start working on this. This is I think what the client is most excited about is doing this targeted email for pre-approved email addresses, which is what she feels will bring you know, uh, bigger number of eyeballs into the site, people, you know, this is this is kind of it really going live, so to speak. Um, okay, so we'll then, on that note, 
it sounds like we should at the very least do a do a vote on the tooltip instructions for you know, to, on this. Uh, David, do you want to uh, talk through this and tell us what you what you think is involved and the compl about talk about the complexity of it? Oh, right. Well, before I talk about the technical complexity, the other bit that's missing is that we don't have any proposed text for the tooltips, but we're making them up. But yeah. Twitter Bootstrap has um, at least for a uh, uh, has built-in support or some built-in CSS for tooltips to make them look mm. nice-ish mm. when you hover over. The idea is we hover over the name, the uh, the label of each um, form field, yes, and that will give a t give you a tooltip as to how to use it yeah. um, by adding in a, a little bit of HTML, which right. the Bootstrap CSS then finds. And okay. which the browser can find even when uh, there's no CSS or anything else going on. Right. And uh, this is basically really a, the only changes in the templates. There's no, we don't need to do anything in the controller or the models for this. And, and no, we... we just need to figure out how to test it. Right. Okay. Uh, well, you can test it by looking for the appropriate. I mean, the. the the generally, the yeah. thing is, it's like it's like for buttons is like alt is equal to some text, and so the testing component is going to be, you know, checking for the presence of that, the appropriate the, the appropriate bit of alt text so you're in, just in the gonna write a, You're just going to write a view spec, right? Uh, and a cucumber feature. Yeah. Well, okay. Although I think that the the testing approach for both will be the same. Yeah. We we'll just look for that little uh, look for the little piece of HTML. Yes. I mean, I guess there's a... Um, the, the, the ultimate thing would be then late, later on maybe adjusting it so that the uh, the admin could be able to edit what the tooltips were, but I, I think we won't we won't go there. Um, well, I, I think I've heard yeah, enough... Yeah, let's to, call that a different feature. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've, I've heard enough to, 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 to maybe take a vote on this feature. Does anybody else want to have any further discussion before we take a vote? No, I'm good. No. Okay. Right. Everybody, so basically we're going to be voting if this is a feature of low complexity, that's one, medium complexity, two, or high complexity, three. If you want to type your uh, choice of one, two, or three into the group chat, uh, and I will then count down three, two, one, go, and then we'll all hit return at the same time for the vote. So assuming everybody's ready, it's three, two, one, go. Uh, so... Uh, John, you're developing a habit of, of being the um, the outlier. Uh, do you want to, to uh, propose why you think it's a two rather than a one? Yeah, usually I'm more optimistic. Um, well, indeed, indeed. You're being the outlier, but now in the opposite direction. Very interesting. Yeah, I was just unclear on the testing part because just because we see the HTML in testing mode, how do we know if it's actually triggering, triggering with mouse over, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, I I, I agree. I, I think I think probably it's sufficient not to be checking for the mouse over because it's so browser specific. I mean, I think tooltips in general, there it's kind of a you know. Like, I wonder if I can, I can get it on one of these things if if these guys have tooltips on it. Yeah. Like, well, so here, for that, wouldn't um, you have to? Uh, what was that free service that? Oh, source, source, Labs. Source, source Labs. Yeah. Source, source Labs has a yeah a suite where you can. Test in different browsers and OS. Yeah. And yeah, I, have, I don't yeah. think we can do it with Capi with um, no. the I mean, you, 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 we can, the, 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 well, we we can do JavaScript testing and different sorts of things. Um, but it, it's sort of uh, it, it, it's the kind of thing that's fairly consistent across browsers. I mean, and it depends I guess, on how you implement it. I mean, the doing it here, like I just opened up here on the clone clone panel. I don't know how um, uh, Pivotal Tracker is doing it. But I guess they've got some sort of style um, that then will allow that to pop. So it's it's. But I, I think it's a fairly standard browser thing. And and you know if if we if we put it in there, it's a bit like having a href. I mean, there's a, I guess there's a question of um, you know the extent to which you want to check absolutely everything. I, I would say that at least in the first instance, just checking for the presence of it in yeah. HTML and it's correctly formatted according to the HTML standard is going to be sufficient. Yeah, it's that it's that title attribute that does it for the uh, yeah informal browser standard, and then um, uh, Twitter Bootstrap puts a little bit more yeah. around it as well. Oh well, yeah, it's, 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 
Oh, right, right. It, it, actually, this right. Their t- title is that clone. Right, right. I was. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So there. You go. So you can see. Yeah. So I think John, what we would just be doing in the first instance is just checking that this title equals clone panel is there, and I think that will that will suffice. Give given the level of feature that it is. Um, Potentially, there's Having going to be different thoughts. browsers that fail to pop that up, but I think that's sort of beyond scope at the moment. Go on, David. So, yeah. yeah. Having tool said tip that, is going to be the title. Sorry, say again, John. The uh, tooltip will be the title. Yeah, here yes. you see here. This is a ahref. This is a link they've got, and they've you know adjusted it so that it's it's an image. But this is a uh, you know clone panel there. I think this title uh, parameter or this is an attribute of the. A tag there is um, is going to be popped when I mouse over. It's popped over. That, that's what pops up. What we need to think about when we release it is it that this tooltips are an are an accessibility issue. Yes. Because a screen reader is not going to see them. Uh, lots of people aren't very familiar with the idea of hovering mouse over buttons. Yeah. Um, that you. Well, might need to sort of decorate it with a link into some static text that uh, does the same job. If the if the help is important, because we don't really want um, we don't really want the client to be putting help in there that uh, the user is going to rely on unless the user can easily find. Well, it. I mean, I I think it's it's one of these things is that you know uh, there's you know a series of things that we do. So what you try and do is one, you try and make sure that the icons or whatever is in place. Uh, you know, look sensible. You try and do everything else you can. I think there's, I, I, you know, the tooltips are even if you don't know to, to mouse hover over over something, it's the kind of thing that's relatively easily discoverable. If you're kind of looking around the site and you leave the mouse there, and you know the tooltip pops up, it's kind of there. Yeah, so I think there's no, you know, um, we should we shouldn't be saying right this is the only support that's going to be there and if that's there then people will naturally understand everything that's going on in the interface but I think it's good to, to yeah, add it as well. That. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. All right. Well, for so the screen readers, can't you just put in the alt attribute? Yeah. I was gonna, it's not I mean, just for images, right? You can do that on other HTMLs, like submission forms and. Um. Well, I think that's something that's something to maybe look into. We should probably probably move on. I mean, yeah, like you have to be careful. I mean, people tend to turn that off on screen readers, so I've heard because it it starts re- getting really repetitive to listen to. Yeah. So uh, the, the, the critical thing here is that we we you know we we've got a uh, an approach about having tooltips, which I think the client you know mentioned would be useful. Um, you know, we can sort of speculate this this way and that. I mean, ultimately, what we want is you know somebody who's got an accessibility issue. Using the site and talking to them about their experience of it and having that drive the work that we do. So uh, um, let's you know yeah. let's 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 keep all of those things in mind. I, I think in the first instance there we can go for agreement that the um, uh, yeah the points on the story is one and that should allow um, that to be put into start mode and we've now got that there. So well, I think we, we haven't heard for, we hadn't heard from John if if. If well, you think it's okay not to set up a Source Labs job on it, uh, or some kind of automated. You want to comment browser. on that, John? Um, no, I'm fine. But I'm still if, learning if, about if testing. If we okay. think we don't need that, then that's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, apologies for um, you know, jumping ahead there. Yes, I mean, I think I think you know, in the ideal world, I think with more resources, then you know, we would we would be doing the Source Labs thing. Um, uh, let's uh, let's see how we go with. Now I click start there, and what is it? That's actually oh, it's moved it up into here. Okay, all right. Yeah. That's, may that's need one. to actually. Sorry, sorry, Michael. I'm Shall saying we... longer term, we may need to do the sauce labs. Like, yeah, people yeah. People start really using. Yeah, this I mean, I, yeah. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. Okay. Um, well, I think that's all for local support. Then that needs to be discussed as a group. Uh, unless there's any other local support business, we'll just move, move quickly on to auto graders. Here we go, autograders. Uh, so yeah, autograders uh, pivotal tracker is active. You know, do jump in here. Um, I'm not really what's uh, got the the I, I don't know. Uh, my brain is not as engaged with this tracker as it is with the local support one at the moment. Um, we've got a number of things in here which are related to stuff that Armando has asked for. Uh, not necessarily. You know, and this is 
there's some things here that are ongoing, like there's sort of a big plan really is to merge all of the different bits and pieces of the different graders into a single grader in a single repository and, you know, have that you know, working. Uh, I've, I've added uh, Travis to the, to the grader system, uh, ongoing thing to try and increase t test coverage. Um, we have some uh, input from Ionis, who's a, a new uh, world TA, uh, on some of the errors that I've been finding. And I think the key next thing as we go, what have we got? We've got, you know, we've got the, the, the two things are, one, this intermittent error that comes up that we would like to get around, and another one is this one over here, enable different deadlines for individual homeworks. And that's particularly important. So we've just, homework zero has just gone live in, it was, was that on Saturday, in the 169 course, and that has a particular deadline. And if we're now going to put uh, homework one on top of that, then um, it, we need to be able to uh, enable these different deadlines for the, for the homeworks. And uh, the, the key thing uh, going forward now is to have um, an independent... Hey, Jeff, thanks for joining us. Um, we're just talking about the autograders project here now. Uh, you're probably muted, as Google does with its feature. To um, uh, anyway, Anytime you join a chat where there's more than four people, it will automatically mute you. Um, but yeah, so we've got kind of a production instance, which uh, and a production... Queue. So the, the way that it works with the autograders is within the edX site, when a student submits a piece of work... Let's, let's go and look at the edX site. Uh, shall we? Um, I, I mean, I've done a, a number of um, sh uh, pairing sessions with other um, TAs over the last few days in which we've gone through this this loop, but uh, I think it probably bears repeating. So we've got the um, 169 course. Uh, so, for example, we've got uh, quiz zero, just live but homework zero, which is the new introductory Ruby homework with me saying, yeah, let's pair on this, let's pair on this. Um, and so here, this choose files and check operation when an individual student uploads their file, it gets put on an, what's called an edX queue. And uh, these edX queues are sort of endpoints um, that can potentially be pushing to an external autograder. The way the uh, Berkeley autograders are configured is that they will pull these uh, student submissions from the uh, Berkeley endpoints. Uh, we have now a, a special, a new uh, edX queue called something like Rev169 Production uh, that this is pulling off for homework zero. Um, We've got, uh, we've got the name of a second, a second queue, which is supposed to be the development queue. And what we really need to do now, next critical thing, is create a, um, as it were, a, the equivalent of the staging and production that we have for, um, uh, uh, you know, our local support at Harrow Community Network. So that, obviously this is the um, production site. Uh, running on, on Heroku. This is the um, staging site running on Heroku. For the autograders, uh, everything's running on EC2, and, you know, we can spin up instances as, as and when we need, uh, so we must spin up a, a testing instance. I think I'm going to add a uh, chore for that right now. Uh, I, mean, I was asking editor to do it. I mean, there's all sorts of issues with sort of keys and access and so on, but uh, uh, create test uh, autograder. Or I guess it's staging, staging autograder for MOOC, like so. Um, and, you know, uh, and then hopefully we can then get into a, a more rigorous workflow where uh, changes to how the autograder works can be tested in staging before being deployed into production and being experienced by the, by the students. Um, what we could really use is, I don't know if I've got this in here somewhere, we could really use a um, performance testing framework uh, for this, which we, we don't have at the moment. Um, so that you know, because uh, of course, really these things have to operate under load uh, with the with the number of MOOC students, um, but we just don't have that in place at the moment. Uh, okay, so um, that's a quick overview of the autograders. Um, any and, uh, there was Nidin in particular. You were you were asking if we were going to hit the autograders. Any any thoughts or concerns or questions from you? Oh, um, other than the one. Um, Hangout video that you posted. Yes, I haven't right. actually had time to look too much at the code. Sure. So, what's the main blocking issue with enabling different deadlines? Uh, so the main the main issue with uh, enabling blocking different deadlines is it just needs to be done. I, I think it's not potentially not a very complex bit of code to be honest. Um, it's just that it's you know the autograder itself is not well covered with tests and it's a bit all over the place. Uh, if I can find the right component, 
So we've got that. This is that's all specs. Um, we've got the edX submission now. Um, oh, and so Ioannis was working on two things. Uh, he's presented two pull requests. One um, dealing with this uh, adjusting the run with timeout, so to try and avoid having this uh, this intermittent error we're getting. The other one was this. We have the edX controller. So there's this thing that, that it loops and. Uh, I'll find the right component in here. And that's that, that's the overall controller at X. I mean, this is entirely this entire Ruby project. I felt sure that the this get submission. Sometimes I come back to it and I wonder if it's the same code that I was looking at previously. And maybe it's oh, it's client. There we go. Yeah. So the, the, this basically this this is the main loop here for the auto grader. This each submission and this. Uh, I think this one is even not even being used. There's like chunks of code, but so this is the key loop. The autograder loops around here. It, it 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 loops and loops and loops. It tries to grab things off the queue, and basically, if there's nothing on the queue, it will go to sleep. Um, and so, we've um, Oannis has submitted something to allow it to reload the configuration after the sleep, which is another important feature. However, we are trying to talk about the process of the, uh, doing the different deadlines. So the different deadlines are handled so it would generate late response there. There's other issues. Here we go. Is that, yeah, it's pretty much this. Uh, the due date is loaded here. Let's have a look. Um, so basically, I mean, the, the, the due dates come in from these configuration files. So like so, related to the queue. And we've got this due date on the QID. I and mean, it may even be that the functionality is in is that we need is in there is not even being used. Um, but so this works for grouped assignments. We load a due date based upon the part SID. Uh, yeah, so the, I think it would be some modification to this, this code here to make sure that we can specify a different due date for individual groups of assignments or even single assignments. Um, uh, I think not. To the, this is the due date here. That seems to be at the queue level. It seems like I, I mean, I, you know, m maybe the functionality is already. Or it just it's just a question of, um, you know, having an appropriate due date in here. Anyway, uh, it's something I haven't looked at in in detail. But uh, that's right. that's that's the code. Okay. Yeah. Go Sam, on. just to just to understand you in turn from that, when this is blocking you from putting homework one on the same server as homework zero. Yes, it it, it yes it it is at the moment. Um, so and it's kind of high priority. Go on. Do you think it's urgent or it, it, when homework live goes one goes live, will it go li live on a separate server if this is not done? Uh, in principle, it would have to. Although, I mean, mm. I I think I think this can be, and I think this is not so hard. It's more that. Since the homework zero grader is now live, I don't want to take it down in order to have to deploy it, I, or at least I want to, it, to the extent possible, I want to rigorously check it on a staging server that homework zero and homework one are both graded on that server before I then swap out, um, you know, uh, uh, swap out with the um, the production, the live production order grader. Right. If that makes sense. So, um, I mean, this is something, uh, you know, I do need to get done. And, I mean, we're, we're pretty much heading up to the top of the hour, which is the end of our allotted meeting time. Um, and it, we've got uh, Mark and Jeff have joined us, which is great to have you with us. Um, does anybody have any other questions or thoughts relating to the order graders or work going forward with the order graders? Is, it, uh, is there a Skype chat? Um, for the autograder, the there is indeed. Yes, anybody who would like to be added to the the Skype chat for the autograders, uh, I, can uh, do I it would now. like that. Yeah, Marion. Yeah. Anybody else? Yeah. Um, I would yeah, like to too. Please. Uh, Marion, John, was uh, was needed? Are you not not in there already? Uh, I don't think for the auto oh, uh, yeah, autograder. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, you're in. Yeah, Sam, could you add Jeff Thomas too, please? Thanks. Certainly can.
And where is the um, Git GitHub repository? I'll okay. show you. Uh, yes. Jeff Thomas, there we go. Um, and the Git repository is uh, so the I guess we do have notes if I can find them. So there is of course the autograders okay. section here, and this is still pretty much up to date. Um, so if we, th this is the the RAG repo. This is uh, you know open public repo. Anybody can clone that. I have uh, continuous integration now running on that. Um, there are, you know, Berkeley people who are not necessarily so involved with these meetings who are pushing stuff to that, which can be confusing. Um, there's also, to now that I had previously cloned the homework repo, which had all the specifications for the homeworks, um, and that's still public, but since I did that, the uh, homework repo has started to include the, um, the, the solutions. And mm -hmm. Armando decided to make that that private, and so uh, you know that's not something that you can get access to. But you can you can sort of you can sort of get the idea. You can still, in principle, run this code and see how see how it works. I've got a little diagram here about how the um, order is supposed to work, and then yeah, I've got kind of an overview there. That's sort of the key key stuff. I guess it would be good. It would be sensible for me to put the oh yeah, and well the yeah Pivotal Tracker instances are put down there. So. Yeah, and we've got some even more people that have joined us, including uh, we've got Dawal, greetings, and oh, it was it was Dawal that was joining. Yep, and uh, I'm, I'm Mark. Good to have you with us. Um, hey, uh, so yeah, so it's top of the hour. Um, I've I've got t t you know two things in my mind are the, obviously the order order ready issue that I've just been talking about, something I need to pair on very soon, and uh, John, there was that uh, dealing with the white space in. Um, uh, the admin edit features on local support are two things I would work on immediately. John, do you have some time for pairing right now, or how's it looking? I do. Okay, I'm cool. Work today. Ah, ah, mixed. Well, good and uh, you know, you, every every cloud has a silver lining, as they say. Yeah. Um, so, shall we just uh, now at the top of the hour we'll we'll wrap the meeting up unless anybody has specific. Agendas for the you know any other projects or anything, but we've got some new people in. Um, we would now usually roll into kind of a pairing session. Uh, who who's free for pairing now? I can. So Mike, Michael's got some time, and uh, I see Jeff as well. Um, Marion, were you were you thinking of pairing now on the? Uh, not in about maybe twenty minutes. I think. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, maybe let's do. Would you check? I don't know if Jeff and Darwell and Mark. Are necessarily in the agile ventures. So our sort of our main coordination point for all of these things is uh, the agile ventures room. There, did I add? Oh, I've added you, Jeff, already. I don't know about uh, Mark. If you want to join, I don't know if you're connected to me. Yeah, can, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you just about. Sure. Yeah, you can uh, add my name as well. That'd be fantastic. Yeah, I don't know that I am connected with you on Skype at the moment, but uh, if you try and connect with me, uh, username Tansako, I've just po pasted that into the uh, group chat there. We can get okay. connected. Um, okay. And uh, Dawal, are, are we connected already? No. Uh, so, again, yeah, for both of you, if you just want to connect to me uh, on Skype, I'll add you uh, into the Agile Ventures um, chat. And you know, if you're particularly if you're interested in Local support or order graders, we can then subsequently move you and add you to the relevant project chat rooms. Uh, so I guess uh, John and I would um, we could just do this little bit of pairing now. Um, I guess that particularly with some new new mem new members such as Darwell, Jeff, and, and Mark, maybe we'll just sort of stay in this channel. And this is sort of should be a fairly simple pairing, John. We could just sort of do this right now and do a push out, and that will give uh, some of the new guys an idea of uh, what's going on. How does that sound? Sounds good. All that right. Sounds fine. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Well, of course, anybody, if anybody's uh, very keen to pair on other things, feel free to, to you know to leave the um, the group chat and um, jump in and create other other sessions and so on. Otherwise, I will just take a sip, sip of. Oh my God, that's fizzy water. Oh, that was a shock. Ah. Mmm. 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 Let us. Yeah. I'd like on. to sit and watch for a couple of minutes. That's Sounds good. Awesome. All right. So, well, since I'm uh, driving, John, maybe I'll just. Um, Try and do this one myself, and with you guys all navigating for me. Let's see how that goes. I'm gonna um, open local support. Uh, so of course, what I should maybe sensibly be doing 
is going and checking that we are. Uh, if I can find my local support window, and of course, just always create a new, new one. Oh, here we go. Yeah, that's a reasonable size. Isn't it? I can increase the text size a little bit in there. Here we go. So yeah, I think I lost that. Uh, okay, so this is the local support. Uh, I will just oh, that's staging, right? Uh, let's um, get checkout develop. Get pull. Uh, I want to get pull uh, develop the origin develop. Like so. Oh, okay, right. So well, I should at least. Um, oh, okay, that was. I think that was uh, David. That was your uh, clear up stuff that you did the other day, being pulled in there. So we'll just make sure that that's uh, clear and running. Um, yeah, and I guess that looks familiar. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. Oh, cool. yeah. Now, what I should sensibly be doing is, of course, getting ready to create a branch. Which I mean, there, there's connections on steps, but that that was some other commits are the ones on the uh, step definitions. Yeah. Yeah. Either way, I mean, I, I reviewed those in tool requests, so I think we're we're okay there. So I'm just going to leave the um, yeah. cucumber things running in the background. Um, the main issue here, and uh, John, maybe you'll direct me. So we've got the pages. It's 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 the show page basically. I think I've got it up here. This is oh I guess uh, John we haven't probably spoken in real time the issues that I highlighted about the some of the flaws in all the cucumber steps um, and the, the R spec thing that all made sense uh, when you reviewed them I guess right I mean I understand if uh, we should put the R spec tests in uh, organization spec rather than geocode spec I just saw that file there so I had thrown them there yeah oh, well that, that's yeah I mean that that's another thing I mean you know well that's that's another conversation to have, which I think is an interesting oh. conversation to have. That we, uh, I, you know, I, I think it could go, it could go either way, and and that's a that's a uh, discussion about the organization of our test suite, which is which is one thing. I, I guess I was just seeing this, and one of the things that I did with Sung and Thomas previously was I highlighted how, and, and this was a very important thing about the development of tests because it's very easy to create a test that doesn't necessarily uh, check the thing that you hope that it's checking for. At least it doesn't, you know. Um, if we go, which is the uh, which is the feature file for the editing the pages? Is it admin edit static features? Is it this one? I think. Yeah. So so previously you had um, this scenario, and you'll forgive me for sort of using you as as live bait here, so to speak. But um, just just because I think this is this is very important for everyone. Um, you had originally written the scenario like this, so checking to the point that there was a link with the text edit, right? Right. And one of the things I I, I then added just as an example was that, you know. In order to check that, that that really is doing the thing that we want to do, we do need to sort of follow that edit and then check that we end up on the right page, because uh, without that, you know, I was able to remove this and effectively break the site, but the test didn't fail. Um, so I, I, I get the I get the sense that you understood that, you know, fairly well. I was just sort of reiterating it for everybody else's benefit, but that 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 all makes sense, right? Yep. Yeah. Great. So uh, right now, of course, and I make. Then that's partly why the pairing is so important. So I mean, I'm you know, it's not singling out John. We all make, you know, and I'm I perhaps more than others. That's why that's really why I love pairing so much is because you know I've got somebody else covering my back for these mistakes that I tend to make. Um, so this is the page that we've got that's showing the edit pages. Let's let's kind of look at for, so for example. So I uh, looked at the I've looked at the HTML under the lot, the uh, staging site versus the. Oh yeah. Production site. Yeah, go on, it seems like the main difference is that there's a descriptive list with a certain styling. Uh, okay. The, if you look in the HTML. For yeah. Well, I'm I'm seeing here staging. in the template itself, we've got a descriptive list thing there. That seems to be the main difference. Right. Uh, because the pages, independently by themselves, like uh, the about us here. Right, it just it, that 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 is going to be just displayed by itself. So, was this 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 DL thing, the the descriptive list, something that was? It, uh, do you know where that came from, John? Oh, uh, that, that probably was part of the scaffolding. Oh, right, because you you did a, a scaffolding that generated the right. Yeah, that would make sense. So, what's that code inside that says DD? 
descript there's uh, something enumerating something. I think this is like you can have a descriptive list and then you can have this is like the equivalent of if you didn't like it's, it's the equivalent of li. Um, oh, Rodri's um, just come on. Uh, and if someone can get on Skype and tell him that we're in this, this meeting, he could join. Um, I guess it, that could be me now that I've mentioned it. Um, okay. Uh, yes. Well, what it sounds like, I'm just checking there. We've got so we've got. Uh, I've got a clean copy here. Um, I guess sensibly, what I would do just to demonstrate it is I would uh, do git. I got a list of. If I do branch minus v, do I get a list of branches? I do. Um, I guess sensibly what I will do is do git checkout minus b, and this is like, um, oh, I don't know, uh, edit white space. And then we could just experimentally, it seems like, and this is the kind of thing, like, I feel like it would be excessive to write a feature to check for this, but it seems like, I don't know if this class is particularly important, but it seems like we could in principle be deleting this and that might solve our problem. Does that make sense to everybody? Everybody could see what I was doing there. There we go. So I was putting the server, and we'll just run that locally and see if we see anything. There uh, we go. Okay, so that, I think that's probably done it. Yeah. Yeah, that looks like it. Yeah, I will just check without the, there we go. Okay. So that's going to be a shortest ever lived branch, I hope. Okay, so now we've got git status. And it almost seems that by itself, I guess, sensibly, <laughs> what I will do here is just run uh, the tests and um, I I ensure that that doesn't have any uh, neg negative effects on the test suite. Um, it almost, yeah, it feels like I don't particularly need to push that branch uh, onto the uh, onto the onto the server onto GitHub. Um, that can just be, you know, I've lived there extremely briefly. To um, you know, we're always sort of cautious there. Hey, Rodri, good to have you with us. Long time no see. Hey. Hey. Um, <laughs> Yeah. I think Ma Marion's going to be pairing on the uh, This Is My Organization feature in about 20 minutes. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, that's good. Um, I was just, uh, we're just finishing the meeting, and I was just doing a, a minor little bit of code fix with um, everybody, partly to show some new people how it, how it works. Uh, in, the, in the ideal setup, this is particularly for um, uh, Mark and, and Jeff, uh, what happens is, you know, a little bit of coding happens by, on one person, and then we swap over, and uh, you know, we maybe push the results of the code through GitHub, and the uh, uh, other person then checks it out and then starts doing some work, and we sort of do ping pong backwards and forwards over GitHub. Although there are any number of uh, me mechanisms that one can use to sort of collaboratively work on the code. A quick um, question about ping pong techniques. Go ahead. Um, do you often have everybody adding each other as remotes and then just pulling from yeah. remotes? Yeah, that, 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 that's, you... that's what we do. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Because um, otherwise, pull requests just start stacking up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Uh, so here I'm just going to take, I'm going to take, I'm checking back out to the development branch. I'm going to try and merge uh, the edit white space branch in there. Is that not going to do? Oh, right. So actually, by, by doing that, it's kind of moved it. Because I, I guess because I hadn't committed it. It's just moved that same, I think, if you look at Git status. I've just got exactly that thing straight on the development branch. So since it's Word and, and everything's green, what I'm tempted to do there is just git commit minus a minus m, uh, removing extraneous uh, white space from static page, admin, edit view, like so, git push. That's going to be on develop. Um, I guess to clean things up, um, and I, did get, I always forget what the syntax is for removing the branch. Uh, but fortunately, there is Google that will tell us these things. So uh, I do git delete branch. Git branch dash d. OK. Uh, or we have even faster, git branch dash d, and then it was uh, oops, capital D. Capital. That's uppercase D. 
uppercase D. Uppercase D, yes. Yeah, I think there is a, have... a small difference if you do it lowercase versus uppercase. I don't know what the difference is, though. Ah. Well, that's... Uh... Yeah, we got rid of it. But there's either an argument there for pair power, pair programming being even more powerful than Google. You know, you know, is it you know in a cage match, Google pair programming, who would win? That's the question I'm asking myself today. Anyway, uh, so having commit, we've pushed that, we've committed it. So now I'm going to check out um, staging, uh, and I'm going to merge develop with staging, right? So we get those few sets of things in here, and then. I'm going to try and remember how to push to staging. So we have to do git push, and it's uh, so staging, and I believe it's staging master. Is that the right way? Good if I just start remember these. these staging things. a remote. So yeah, so uh, staging is uh, is remote. There we go. Oh uh, no, I think it has to be staging. You have to do force or something. Don't you? Oh, I probably have to do force as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the thing. So, so, so staging is a remote. It's this Heroku. Um, you don't. Uh, or you can do for, force. The, the, uh, there was this thing of there's basically a way around of not doing the force, where you refer to kind of the master version of your branch, and then that somehow gets around it. But so if we just go and look here, yeah, the um, the staging is a remote here, which is our, our staging server that we were looking at earlier. Um, that's this one here. And uh, so that's now pushing that up to. Um, and so with that fixed, in principle, we're, we're still just waiting on the. I guess we can we can get to. Over here, let's go back to the. Local support. Jason first. Hmm. We can argue that this one will be finished, assuming that, that works. Let's see. That that's up and that's live. Let's go to the staging server. Staging server, we should reload and hopefully see a bit less white space. Let's see. Just about further, we've got, if we do git remote minus v, we can see a list of all of the. Yeah, um, it works. There we go. We can see that we've, I've got you know my production, my staging things set up here. So yeah, that's that appears to have worked. So we can click finish on this feed here. Uh, that's the admin can edit all pages. And then these will be ready to be delivered to the production. They are now ready to be delivered to the production production server. The autograders um, are, are so complex. Um, Marcelo, yes, the autograders is, is is a bit of a nightmare. It's uh, it's a great um, it's a great exercise in legacy code refactoring. Um, yes, I find myself being stretched. But we, uh, we are we are gradually increasing test coverage. Um, I hope to have them uh, whipped under control oh, yeah. before too long. Um, okay, so well, that that actually was a very nice, extremely simple edit. It was showing more of the DevOps flow than anything else. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's done. Uh, I have a silly question. Please, best kind. Um, the purpose of having a staging version of the website is just you know to make sure, really, really sure that you didn't break it when you put it to production. Yeah, like because one step in between. Yeah, because basically, quite a lot of the time, you really did break it, and and that's you know there, there's these systems even when they're quite small uh, can get well, quite complex. Go on. It's also just to give the client something to something look at to yes. that they can easily look at. They can go to a website and manipulate it themselves. They're not going to yeah. like right. to start up a rail server on that. Yeah, I mean, and the, I think there's other the more sophisticated stuff. In some, in some of the, the staging server is just for the DevOps folks to, to like, you know, check all the final things. And you would have, uh, like, like, for example, uh, edX. They have the edge.edX.org. And I think, you know, edge.edX.org is not so much a staging server, it's sort of a development server where people can try out different experiences about, you know, related to features in the, in the, 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 the edX sites. And then they have a separate staging server that, that no, the people don't have access to. And then there's a production server which is doing edX.org. Um, so there, there's, you know, there's increasing numbers of servers that you can have in different things. Uh, you know, some organizations have, you know, the staging server, whatever's on the staging server is automatically rolled to the, pushed to the production server, you know, with some frequency. Um, but uh, yeah, that's a good point, Michael. Uh, do, you, do do we have a, a continuous integration server that can we, do this for us automatically? We do. We have continuous integration on um, on the what's it called on GitHub. Trap GitHub and Trap. Trap is the system that we use. 
So we have, uh, you know... The, we, the, we don't the, have continuous deployment. Though. We don't have continuous deployment. We don't have, uh, at the moment, anything pushing out the code automatically. It, given the speed that we, we're moving at, it, continuous deployment doesn't, wouldn't seem to add so much to us. But as I was mentioning in the chat earlier, basically my long-term plan is that there will be 24-7 uh, pairing on Agile Ventures, um, you know, on multiple tracks. And eventually, you know, it would be great to get us up to the speed where, you know, continuous deployment became... Uh, a suitable thing to um, to include. Okay. All right. Any other questions or thoughts relating to um, what we just did, or any of the other Agile Ventures um, stuff? I've been away for a long time. <clears throat> no worries, Roger. Uh, you know, yeah. the, the the whole framework is designed to allow people to come in and uh, out as as and when. Um, you know, it's it's it, it's all good. But part, partly, I mean, that's what the the process of having continuous integration, not just on 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 local support, as it were, you know, who, you know, checking things into the main main repository, but also we've got everybody with their different branches. They can do pull requests, and the pull requests also get checked against the. Um, uh, and I guess uh, actually I, I should have maybe what I should have done there, John, was I should have pulled in your changes here as well. Um, I, right, I guess this is the thing that we, the other thing that we might have discussed, which is like, should the things be in this geocode spec versus being in the organization .rb or organization spec, uh, which actually we can talk about now. But um, so we, anyway, anyway, but the, to finish the point there is, we can see that the code that John submitted, you know, past the integration, and that you know allows us to all, you know, if John then has to go off, we can, you know, still pull it in, and you know, it doesn't. It's, uh, it's 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 I, I I you know the whole distributed thing seems to be working quite well. But John, on that note, I guess you were saying that you um you found that there already was a geocode spec, and that seemed a good place to add stuff rather than you creating that far from scratch. Yeah, yeah. I don't know uh, the story behind it, <clears throat> mm. and I don't mm. know that that top spec isn't mine. I don't know what that's really for. Mm. Yes, I don't. Uh, do we remember what this was, Michael? I guess this uh, is... I think it was an attempt to move some of the code out of organizations back, wasn't it? Yeah. Didn't that used to live in organization? I would imagine it probably did. Yes, it's interesting that we've got the scribe one. And my concern about, about it was that uh, I guess if people are looking for an overview of organization, they will go to organization spec. And if something's in geocode spec, then they might not necessarily find it until it breaks. Not that that's necessarily that important. Um, I mean, in some ways, it seems like ultimately what this should be is, you know, in the address spec. I think in some ways, to the extent that we're trying to move towards this refactoring of the an address class out of the organization class would kind of make that... Interesting. Would kind of, I think put it into some kind of coherent high-level plan. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I don't know about you guys. I'm, I'm feeling the need for, a, you know, uh, at least a five-minute downtime. Uh, we can certainly come back and do pairing, potentially on the autograder, if uh, people want to do that. Uh, I guess Marion was planning a, a local support one, uh, which you could you could do in, in this chat room if you wanted, Marion. Um, I, I guess I'm I'm tempted to say to, to John, um, what do what do you think about redoing this pull request so that the that, that it involves moving all of the geocode spec into the address spec? Sure. Because I think they're all associated with addresses, aren't they? Um. The I'm I'm just looking at address spec on your screen right now. Uh, mm. How would I? I tried to this this new syntax um, let and so forth like that is oh, yeah. different than the factory girl setup that we have on geocode spec. I mean, I can yeah. just paste mine in there, um, but I think there is a different way to do that. You know, because the before block forces everything to be loaded, whereas let is lazy. I mean, right. it doesn't really matter, but yeah, I I, I think it's reasonable to combine those two, at least in the present. I mean, there's a... I have a lingering 
suspicion about Factory Girl as being slightly dangerous, actually. Um, but, yeah. I mean, I, I guess I'm kind of... You know, it, would see, it would seem in the first instance that we could kill a number of birds with one stone in as much as uh, we've got a number of things in geocode underscore spec where geocode doesn't correspond to any business object that, I, that we're ever going to have, I don't think. Um, and so we could take all of those things and the ones that you've, the new ones that you've created and put them into address spec and that would be sort of a coherent organization. Um, uh, who's written address spec so far? Uh, me. I, I, kind of, I kind of credited that. That was my contribution okay. to trying to uh, refactor the organization spec. Um, I mean, I say I, I'm keen on thinking about things like it, in the models category as being, you know, business objects. Uh, although Raphael, uh, you know, in his reorganization of... Um, he puts sort of, service objects on there. Yeah, he put sort of like things like this first capitals humanizer yeah. thing as a kind of, you know, an object that does a process rather than actually has any state, which I which I have I have mixed feelings about. But, Feels like Java. Uh, maybe, but uh, anyway. So, uh, but that it sounds like that's you could do that rearrangement of your. Oh yeah. Thing and that doesn't even necessarily. It, it's it's simple enough that I mean you're obviously more than welcome to pair on it with, with people. But, uh, my my brain is starting to slowly run down now. Does anybody else have any other business for the group? Um, we can leave this hangout running if you want to start pairing immediately on something. Uh, I might lead another pairing in a in a, in a after I've had a chance to, you know. I guess we lost uh, Mark there. Bye, Mark. Uh, uh, Jeff, thanks very much for joining us. Do do you know the same time each week, and uh, you guys are in the in the chats. I guess I wonder. Yeah, maybe. Um... Hey Sam, I I just had one question real quick. Go, go um, ahead. You know, I was lucky enough to find this course just uh, about three or four days ago, so I've been trying to catch up to where you guys are at. Sure. Um, this project that you guys are doing sounds really cool. I, I understand the general workflow and everything. Mm. Um, what would you say, what are some key things to do to just get up to speed with uh, where you guys are at right sure. now? Well, when, when you say you discovered the course, you mean the 169 course? <laughs> yes, the, correctly. Okay. Correct. So, so you haven't previously programmed in Ruby and Rails? A little bit, but okay. um, yeah. definitely more on the beginning side. So sure, maybe sure. this is not even an appropriate place for me well, to be. I don't know. <laughs> no, we're all beginners. There's, there's arguments. There's arguments on both sides about whether you know. There are some people who might say that uh, you know, ideally, you should take you know, you should take and finish the one six nine courses, the two of them, point one and point two, before starting to do something like this. However, the Berkeley okay. students who do this face to face, um, I'm just saying that's one argument. The Berkeley students who do this face to face. Uh, course, the equivalent of 169 in Berkeley that you know Dave and Armando teach live to them. They do a project in parallel with learning all of the stuff. Um, so, and I would argue in some ways, actually, it's you know assuming that you have the, the, the sufficient time and whatever, then doing the, the being involved in a project like this is a fantastic thing to be doing in parallel with the course because you kind of get to see. In more detail, the, how the tools and techniques from the course get used in some real-world project, rather than them being abstract things that you have to take the instructor's word for that they are useful. Yeah, so. agreed. I mean, that's that's how I learn is by trying to find a project that I can work right. alongside with whatever I'm trying to learn. I yeah. agree. So, um, yeah, I mean, I can. I'll just. Uh, well, it's good to hear everyone's kind of maybe more on the beginner side, although. Oh, we're definitely um, more on the beginner side, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I'll just, I'll just, you know, try to catch up. I'll take a look over the code, and I'll just try to look for opportunities to pitch in when I can. Yeah. Well, and the key thing, really, and this is we've been saying this actually to a number of people today, um, it's that we don't expect anybody to kind of like try and get stuff done by themselves. In fact, we we strongly encourage that everybody pairs. Uh, you know, that does things through through you know sort of small group sessions. So so I think the best way to come up, obviously, definitely do look over the code. You know, feel free to fork the repo. You know, muck around how, however you like to investigate. Uh, there's lots of wanna, materials. You might want to get added to Pivotal Tracker. Yeah. Uh, or right. issue tracker. Yeah. Okay. Kind of. 
we could, um, we can we can do that if 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 you're connected in the um we've got you in the chats now so you know yep. basically anytime you have any any kind of immediate need to be connected to any more data then we can definitely do that um but i yeah try try and uh get yourself involved in a in a pairing session just even just to sort of sit in in the back and and watch what's going on that's you know i think a great way to get started yep that's okay great thanks sam good stuff All right thanks jeff look forward to to pairing with you in future um okay so, uh, Marion, were you thinking of starting a session now? On the, the this is my organization thing. Hey, Sam. Hey. Uh, I I think Miriam and I are going to start in about fifteen or twenty minutes. Okay, cool. Well, I guess maybe what I'll do is I'll end the broadcast here and and stop the recording. Um, and. Uh,